Okay, looks like we're in operation. I think everything's working by the looks of it. Welcome to the live stream return. I think it's like live stream 54, something like that. We'll pick up from, you know, where we left off before. My name's Ed Bird and this is the Shoe Sanctuary, which is... Uh, it's been tidier. I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, it's been tidier in here. Yeah, I need to have a little bit of a, a clear up, but, you know... That's, that's That can happen. This time. There's always time. When I got the uh, Edbud drones and the clones in operation so I can test out some of these other shoes, you know, we'll, we'll get to tidying up and sprucing the place up a little bit. Thanks everybody for joining uh, the stream already. There's a few people here. Stephen C, 1984. Sir, one day you and I will have to meet up and have a, a nice brew, maybe a cold beer or something, and talk only fools. I think that'd be fantastic. I'd really enjoy that. We definitely need to do that. Um, I've got to try and pronounce your names. Is it Jotaro? Jotaro, you've got the, it looks like you've got the gold. Uh, the first comment in the uh, live stream chat. Cheekster777 is here. Um, he says, let's go, let's do it. And we've got uh, Shafiq Khan. Uh, he says, greeting running warlords. I like that. There's a little bit of a uh, Dungeons and Dragons vibe about that one. I like it. Um, we got the... Uh, who else is here? we got Ram's House in the house, literally. Not the Ram's House, but in the house. It's cool. Um, so he's fighting a cold. Oh, I'll tell you what. That really bad chest that I had in January. Oh, I'm so glad that it's gone. I was looking at my Strava, like fitness sort of uh, graph, and that looks like a, you know a good a good sort of upward peak now. Uh, I feel back to where I should be, back to where I uh, where I was maybe like a a year or so ago, maybe even longer before that. Where fitness really feels like it's back there. So I hope you couldn't get over that Rams house. Uh, Stephen H in the house. Um, is it Marnian? Marnian is in the place as well. We've got loads of people here. Uh, du Boy Caprio. Uh, Willie Diaz is here from Phoenix. How you doing, Willie? Thanks for tuning in. I know you always comment on the videos, you're always watching. Um, thanks all of you who've been uh, subscribing recently. I think we're up to about, is it 30? Cheekstall, no? Uh, it's like 35,000. I, I kind of just concentrate on doing the content and, and kind of getting that ready. Ah, thank you very much, Mrs. Edbud. She she is real. She's here. She's and she has a whole name of her own. She does, but you know, I, you don't always want to say that. You know, we're live. You know, for people, they you might not want me to say that. So, now oh, she's put me on the spot there. But she did just break a a glass to bring me this. This is a plastic glass from the uh, Yeovil Half Marathon twenty twenty two. Oh, it tastes all the better for it. I can tell it's from that half marathon. It really does have the essence of it. Thank you, Mrs. Edbud, for bringing me that. Um, yeah, her name is Charlotte. But you may or may not have already known that. Uh, Christina is in the house from Vermont. Uh, Luke Acor, how are you doing, Luke? I hope everything is going well for you, sir. One of my old students there. Uh, top man, top man, Luke. Uh, Jack D is in the house. Uh, Lord Pickleton. Pickleton? Lord, it's hard to say that, Pickleton, especially after you've just eaten a very large meal. Um, Rob Baronet is here. Um, uh, du Bois is uh, in the Philippines. Amazing. Yeah, I'm here in Yeovil. I think you probably can't get much uh, more of a, a differentiation between the two. Uh, very different places. Very, very different. Um, who else we got? Lick it in the front. Okay, yeah, I won't read the rest of that one out. So I'll just come back from COVID. Any tips? I would suggest being very, very careful about your comeback. Don't hit it too hard. Just slowly, slowly bring yourself back in. Some shorter runs, easy runs. Keep it really easy. Um, if you are in the chat, please hit that like button. It really does help us out to spread the word, spread the good word of the of the shoes. Yeah. Um, Dart Kick says, hello from Boston. Are you in Boston, England or Boston, Massachusetts? Let, let me know because that's, that's quite a, uh, an important uh, distinction because um, I do have some news about such things. Um, 
Stephen C says, did Miss Erdbert appear in a video live stream once? Yes, there is a uh, once, I can't, it's a long time ago now, but I have asked her to be in some new, some videos coming up, so, um, ah, Dark Kicks is Massachusetts, awesome, I am coming over to the Boston Marathon, I'm not running it, but I'm coming over with Puma, they've invited me across to check out some of their wares, and I duly obliged as well, um, Boston looks like a really cool place and I get to see the marathon as well so um, that would be amazing some really great people running um, some really top athletes um, so I get to uh, come over to uh, the US of A I'm really looking forward to it I'm going to wear my uh, my Ed Bud uh, merch there just you know just to, so they know who I am because they, they might not know they might just think I'm some strange bloke out of a you like a UK sitcom or something I don't know um, the beast is here. Beast is here. I'm um, just laying like a like a slug, like an energy slug against the heater, absorbing the the, uh, the strength that emanates from the uh, the the warm metal. Yeah. Um, let's see what we got. There's loads and loads of uh, questions popping up. What I'm going to do is try and sort of section this up into some sort of forthcoming reviews. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my marathon training, which is. I don't know, it's kind of been slightly successful, not in other ways, I suppose, due to illness. And then we'll just throw it open for a later question. So um, we'll we'll try and keep it moving like a like a freight train uh, full of, of coal and, and uh, one-legged turkeys. Um, let's see what we got going on here. Ramsell says, thank you. Awesome. Thank you for tuning in. Um, is it D, DG gone crazy? Says hello, Edbird. Hello to you. Thanks for tuning in and being with us. Um, Chris says Chris is back in the house, injured since October. Oh no, Chris! Horrible five months. Hope to get running in the next few weeks. Yeah, take it easy, but nice to hear that you're getting back out there soon. Injuries uh, really are not very nice at all. They're not nice injuries. Probably the worst period I can remember. Back in September last year, had that weird virus type thing. Not entirely sure what it was, but it just went away after a while. But yeah, really not me for six. Um, Martin reacts. All did um, his first running shoes today. The Vaporfly Next Percent too. Wow, that's a good, a good one to get your first shoe, I suppose. Uh, running an old thirty pound, thirty euro shoes. Yeah, I mean you will, uh, you'll really enjoy the Vaporflies. They are exciting to run in. Um, GG gone crazy says, "What's your favourite Puma? Favourite Puma uh, gotta be the uh, Deviate Nitro Elite Two. That shoe just seems to hit all the buttons for me. It ticks all the boxes. Light, nimble. Uh, there's a bit of pop there, but it doesn't feel overtly overstacked. If you see what I mean, it's a nice, reasonable stack. Um, so that's definitely my favourite at the moment. <clears throat> um." Jonathan Street says so training for Leeds, um, Leeds Marathon. He's got the Vaporfly 2 and the Puma Velocity 2. Awesome. I hope you're enjoying the Velocity 2. Really good shoe. Um, and you can't go wrong um, with the Vaporfly 2. It's, a, it's the Shaw SM58 of running shoes. Uh, the SM58 is that sort of silver microphone that you always see at press conferences with the big sort of uh, round chainmail like windshield on the front. Uh, Mark says, evening Ed, first time here, thanks for tuning in Mark, we much appreciate it, and Anne Krask it says hi as well, BKK is in the house with a question, will you be purchasing the Vaporfly 3 prototype, you can bet your money on, your money, you can bet, <laughs> yeah you can bet money on things, that's a good one, what I know, um, you can bet your life on it, yeah I'll try and get that, um, I, I really do quite like that proto version, um, especially now with some better pictures of it, it really is nice. I mean, it's kind of got this same vibe, hasn't it, going on here as this one. My my treasured, slightly off-white sail colour uh, looking Vaporfly 3, uh, sorry, Vaporfly 2 uh, Protos there. Really lovely shoe. I really like that one. So I will try and pick it up and uh, get a review out for you, see, see how it pans out. It does look a lot more squashy um, in all the videos and things that we've seen so far. Uh, so we'll have to see. It is a bit of an iPhone, I think, though. It's how 
how much how different can it be you know how different is it going to be um dave y says hello from I iowa in the usa fantastic thanks for tuning in dave um Rams House says, smash the button, like button before. Yeah, if you're in the chat, if you are watching right now, live with us, uh, do hit that like button. It really helps out, helps the channel out a huge amount. If you want to help the channel out too on a more sort of ad hoc basis, rather than sort of becoming a member, um, you can hit us with a super thanks as well. Perhaps if you've got a particular question that you want to get straight to the mind of Ed Bud. I'm not even sure that I want to go straight to the mind of Ed Bud, but there we go. Um... Alec Church says, hello from beautiful Cornwall. I need to get back to Cornwall. I had a really lovely holiday there with my wife uh, a while back. It was lovely, really relaxing place to be um, out in the middle of nowhere. It was great. Good running sort of uh, place as well. Uh, Rob Bar um, Barnett says, 21 miles yesterday, averaging 6.18 per mile. Crikey. I, I could not ma manage 21 miles averaging that pace, Rob. That is, is really good. Uh, sub 3 for Manchester is on. Hopefully means I never have to run a marathon again. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I might do the Brighton Marathon. and I'm, I may say a similar thing. I'll kind of do it. I want to do it and, and enjoy it and for what it is. Uh, I may not do them very often. I think a half marathon is kind of my, my thing. But we'll see. We'll see how we go. Um, Richard Braithwaite here says, hey, uh, do you think we are reaching saturation point with running shoes? I think there are a lot of shoes now that kind of do a very similar thing. I think we've kind of got to a point where everyone's kind of hopped on this certain bandwagon with specific designs and the implementation of certain elements within the shoe. And I think we have got to that stage where there's not a huge amount of innovation. That's why I've been quite interested really puma stuff because they're just doing something a little bit different just something outside i don't want to say the words i hate that outside the box thing but it's just they're just pushing the envelope a little bit it's just going a little bit further which which i like that's good we need to do that if we if we just carry on you know the cookie cutter kind of vibe copy and paste yeah um, i don't like that um, robin says a bud in the usa yeah it's going to be good i am looking forward to it it's going to be great. Just think of all that new stuff that Puma may have to show me as well. All those really weird questions that I can ask them about how they test the shoes. And and uh, what what is Puma Grip made of? What is that rubber? Because it's like no other rubber that I've ever come across. It's uh, a rubber all of its own. A special formula. Maybe it's like locked away in a safe or something somewhere. Okay, I am going to ask them. Um, yeah, um, it does look really grey, actually, Boston. I, I realise that's on like a sort of US holiday, isn't it? Sort of, I guess it, over here we have these bank holidays where the bank is shut, but everything else is like open. It's a bit weird. Um, these days, anyway, when I was a, a young child, uh, bank holidays were like the most boring thing ever because like, nothing was open. You just had to... You know, go to your grandma's house or something or, you know, play in the garden or load up a Spectrum game and then realise that you didn't really want to play it or something like that. And they used to, used to take ages to load up. These days, it probably it would probably be like three or four minutes now it would load up and then you'd just be, oh, yeah, well, that didn't take all that long. But when you're young, you know, things take longer, don't they? It seems to take much longer to to sort of do stuff like the summer holidays go on for like a year when you when you when you're little um chris says hi he's watching in rome italy fantastic um jose says hi from seville yeah i saw the marathon yesterday tim gross fantastic stuff um i know that a lot of you perhaps watched tim's channel but i was really glad to see he got in under three hours really brilliant well done tim gross what a great guy as well what a lovely chap. I need to meet up with him uh, and just, just run with the guy. He's a really lovely chap. Uh, Ram's House has got a, a, a chocolate Labrador, I guess, who enjoys the videos. <laughs> awesome. Maybe I need to get Beast on here more, you know. I can uh, expand the channel out to uh, 
animals as well, uh, running animals. A bit like in Scrooge, you know, at the start of that film where he's telling uh, Bill Murray that they need to appeal to more animals, you know, have some cat-based television and stuff. Lee Harrison says he's watching Leeds. He was uh, in Yeovil and went to a great sushi place. I think that's still around, actually, that place. Is it Dan Daniel Sushi or something? I think that place is still here. Stephen C. says they were damaged turkeys. <laughs> he knows it. Um, Carrie Smith says, Ed Bud. Just, just Ed Bud. I, it is me. I am real. I'm not just a, a Max Headroom style chap. Um, James Otto says, which flanger pedal should I die uh, buy even? Um, Eddie Van Halen, custom or boss? I did have a really good, um, was it the John Petrucci? It's like a chorus and vibrato sort of thing. That was kind of cool. Flange, I don't think I've ever had a flanging pedal. I, I'm not too well well versed on those. Perhaps if there's any guitar players in the in the chat there, do let James know what you think he should get. Andrew's in South Carolina watching. Thank you very much. And uh, Prin Prineve, Prineve. Hi, Ed. Good evening. Good evening to you too. Hope you're having a top day. Um, what else we got going on here? James, uh, James, uh, J. James Waller says first time here for, uh, from Swansea. Fantastic. Training for the marathon. Uh, also doing 5k every single day of 2023 for McMillan. Amazing. Yeah, hopefully Brighton should should be a nice, uh, a crisp morning. That's what I want. I don't want it too hot. I just can't run in the heat. Um, it'll have to be the short shorts and the vest, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a gel. I reckon every five miles at least. Um, with those long runs I've been doing, I should talk about the tra marathon training really a little bit. Long runs, um, I've been finding that that kind of works well. Around about five miles-ish uh, for a gel. I may have to skip using those science in sport gels that I've been using for years. Uh, they would seem to be upsetting my stomach. Um, I had some really bad um, stomach cramps yesterday. It was like 11 odd miles, but I, I wanted to get a load of mileage in running at that marathon pace that I want to aim for. It's about 7.30 a mile. And uh, yeah, the last three mile rep, was it was not pretty. But I did it. I, I did it. And in the end, I was a sort of fist bump. Yeah, I can do this. So even if I need to do it three miles and then a mile sort of easier pace and just do that, I, I can I can do that. I'm just really struggling to run at that 7.30, though. It just feels weird. Um, I always seem to gravitate down to about 7.15 or 7.20, and I think I'm going slower than I am. So it's a bit odd. Um, Andy, UK36, in your opinion, Ed, what is a good cushioned shoe that is responsive uh, for an over 50 heavy runner? Cushioned shoe that's responsive. Hmm. Um, I'd, I'd put the Invincible Run out of the uh, running for that. It's just a bit of a silly pun, that one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just too squashy for that. Maybe look at something like the... Um, Maybe like the Speed, Speed 3, Speed 2 or Speed 3. That's got good cushion, but there's a bit of pop there as well from that nylon plate. So I think that'd probably be my my best suggestion there. Um, Jose says um, he's watching um, from Boston, first time at live. Uh, he won Marathon Train was humbled on a 5k race last week. Looking forward to a better tune-up. Yeah, it's an odd one, really. I, I I don't like to race all that often. I like to kind of build myself up for some key stuff and, and train. I like doing the training. I like just, you know, getting out there and running and enjoying it. So I don't want to be racing all the time. I think it'd be good to get a half marathon or maybe like a 10K in, you know, before if I can, um, before I head over to Brighton. Uh, I'll have to see what's around and what's coming up, but that illness um, where that really bad chesty cough was couldn't get rid of it. 
that really set me back. So I've you know got up to like 15, 16 miles there on the longer run. So I think I'm okay from that perspective. Uh, I've got that fitness back. It feels like the pace has returned as well. Uh, I feel like I've got a little bit in reserve now. So things moving in the right direction there. But you know, marathon training is tough, you know, because it's such a long period where you're, you know, building up and building up. All it takes is for you to get a bit of a you know, like a cold or a cough. There's so much going around as well at the moment from where we've been cooped up for ages and then suddenly everybody's, you know, back out in the uh, in the mix, in the cement mixer, as it were. Everybody's picking up all of the uh, the bugs and stuff. And spe certainly when you've got like a little kid, you know, uh, my, my little boy's two and a half and he's coming back with all sorts, you know. If he's not got a runny nose, then, you know, something's wrong, you know. But yeah, he's a good little boy. He's uh, he's into running. When he first saw the old uh, Ed Bud top, he was like, Daddy, Daddy. It's like, yes, well done, little man. Running, running, running away. That's all he likes doing at the moment. He likes running, escaping. But he's, you know, he's a little boy. He's excited by the world. That's what we should be. Um, du Boy says, have you got 100 miles on the uh, SC trainer yet? No, it is like knocking around here somewhere. Here it is. Uh, not yet. Um, I don't like the upper on it, I've got to be honest. It's not really the fit I kind of like. New Balance are a bit odd for me. Is Was this an 11 and a half? Yeah. The 11s are too small. Um, they just don't really feel correct in terms of the fit. And the 11 and a half is a little long. So, yeah, it's a bit of a pain. I've got to wear a certain sock with that to get it just right. But I'm not keen on the upper. I might take it up to... 50 maybe or something maybe i'll go to 100 in it if i get the chance but it's not one that's really lit my fire too much um rob barrett says half marathon is peak distance yeah it's kind of like it's kind of my favorite distance really that one because you can you know you can still push it pretty tough pretty hard you can't do that on the marathon i won't be able to do that if i go near my sort of anywhere near my half marathon pace for the marathon i will burn out way too quick so I'm being very cautious there, trying to be sensible, trying to be realistic. <clears throat> Let's see what else we've got going on here. Uh, Silla is here from Sweden. Uh, so I, hope, I hope you're enjoying the channel. Looks like you are. And EM Triathlon is here too. Um, Georges uh, says, what is the best upper of all the super shoes? Oh, the best upper of all the super shoes. Can I include the Primex Strung in that? I really hope that they translate that material across to some of the... Like the Adios Pro line, for example. That would be an absolute corker of an upper. I do like the one on the A6 Metaspeed Sky. That's particularly nice. It's like a, like a glove on your foot. A foot glove. So, yeah, those are probably my two favourites, I think. Uh, Steve H says, do you think we'll ever get a revolutionary new shoe technology like carbon plates? I don't know, like, plates have been around for a while, haven't they? They've sort of dabbled with them a little bit. You had sort of carbon shanks and stuff in like the Jordans, uh, like Jordan 11, for example. That had a carbon shank. Um, it's a bit more like beefy in the Jordan uh, 12. So they, those have been around for a while. Um, it's interesting to see Nike, you know, utilising the foam and the AirPods, I think, in the Alpha Fly. That's kind of cool. That shoe did work well for me yesterday, the Alpha Fly 2. Um, I felt like I could maintain that half marathon, uh, sorry, the marathon target pace in that shoe. It really did seem to work. Although when I got back from the run, it, the, the rear side on the right shoe is making this really weird like squeaking noise it sounds like the plate and the foam are sort of separating or something so i'm not entirely sure what's happened to that one um i, I think it's maybe retirement time for it it looks pretty beaten up anyway um so yeah new stuff i don't know um i think the foams are the big thing at the moment and it looks like it's the foam really that is making the difference in the vapor fly um, where they've done that recent study and tested all the super shoes, it does seem like the foam is making the big the big difference. 
Um, if you're in the chat, please hit that like button. It really does help us out. And hit us up with a super chat as well if you've got a particular um, question you want to get to me. It really does help the channel out to you know continue sort of progressing and moving forward. And uh, I can you know try and sort of bring a few more shoes in as well. There's a lot of stuff that's arrived recently. I'll just grab a few things from over here if I can. Um, Sockany have sent over the Peregrine 13 for me to try out. So it's a Gore-Tex uh, model, this one. I think this is the, the GTX. I believe so. I'll tell you what, it smells good. Now, the interesting thing about this shoe, this is very interesting, the majority of the cushions actually come in from this really beefy insole. I don't know if you can see that, which is kind of like a compressed sort of pellet type thing it's really thick as well and that's the majority of the uh, the cushion in this one so it's, it looks like quite a sort of minimal um midsole anyway but yeah i'm keen to try that out nice and light as well for a trail shoe so that's pretty cool and we've also got the uh, am i allowed to show you i'm not entirely sure i'm allowed to show you that one yet but there's uh, the puma uh, the forever run that's come in as well the forever run nitro so uh yeah hope to have a video um, documenting my review on that one. It'll probably be the start of March. I think that's when the embargo is on that one. So do look out for that if you're a big Puma fan. Uh, that is coming soon. I've got some stuff coming over from America as well. Hopefully that will arrive soon. Uh, Reebok, the Energy 5. Um, I think that's incoming later in the week. Um, so there's loads of stuff happening. Lots and lots of things going on right now. Uh, Hugo says hi from uh, Lisbon, Portugal. Thanks for tuning in, Hugo. It is much appreciated. Um, David is in Tel Aviv. Fantastic. His first marathon this Friday. Had to lower the pace, though, because he's uh, a, a bit injured. Using the Endorphin Pro 3. Great shoe. Great shoe. Uh, Steve Moore says shout out for Luke Ward. Luke Ward, a big shout out to you from from Stephen. Like maybe your your brother, perhaps could could well be. Ed Bud says hello. Hope you're having a lovely Monday evening. It's very mild actually out there. Got out for a little recovery today after the longer run yesterday. Uh, just three, what was it? Three and a half miles. Just really easy pace. Invincible three. It's fantastic. Really hitting the spot for that sort of easy. Um, recovery keeping the legs nice and nimble feeling pretty decent actually today sometimes just having a nice easy run um frees the legs up a bit a leg loosener i need to patent that one perhaps Probably someone's probably done that already adam caswell says ever struggle with the alpha fly laces being like mini sores yes yes many times um you got to get them just right haven't you that sort of perforated lace it's a it's a bit of a uh, bit of a danger zone up at the top there you've got to get the tension just right especially with the alpha fly it's a bit of a weird one because you you don't really need too much tension you don't need to cinch the laces that much because the upper itself tends to actually do a lot of the work there to hold your foot into the shoe so there we go steve Moore says, good to see you again eddie good to see you here um, Andrew on my way says good evening to you Ed, and all my running friends thanks for tuning in Andrew Reuben says which shoe would you recommend for daily up tempo shoe uh, I would like a shoe without a plate don't mind one but okay uh, I would say daily up tempo I'd, I'd get the um, Adios uh, Adios 7 where is it it's up here isn't it? yeah if you've got a reasonably narrow foot they do this in a wide fitting though as well don't they so I don't really see there's any reason that Everybody can't check it out. I so like this thing. There's nothing to it. It's so light you could wear it as an earring. There we go. Not really sure where that came from, but there we go. Uh, that would be my my uh, recommendation. And it's dead cheap as well. You can probably pick it up for about 70, 75 quid uh, over here in the UK. Uh, no plate. There is a um, like a torsion sort of thing there, but it just creates, it gives you a little bit of pop. You know, it gives a, a little bit of sort of torsional rigidity there so great shoe really love that one i would switch the laces out though maybe put some other laces in they're a bit thin and sort of spindly you have spindly laces yeah you can yeah you can you can do that um hamza it says hi from egypt amazing thanks for tuning in hamza hope you've uh, 
hope you're enjoying the channel and all the content. If there's anything you want to see, you know, let me know. I'll see what I can do. Someone trying out torque gels there. I've not, not heard of those before. I'm going to need something that just sort of... Do you know, I might have to just get some of those Morton gels because I remember using those and they just they just work really well. They just sort of seem to evaporate and give you some... Like, like a Lazarus-like effect. Phoenix from the flames type thing. Um, let's try not to miss... We, we, I think we've missed lots of comments here. I'm going too slow. Uh, Lucas is here. He says, hello. Kevin Stunner's in the house. Apparently there's a Weymouth 10K. Kev, is that the one that starts up on the on the hill? Because I got some unfinished business on that one. I want to do that race, but when I haven't done a gig the night before. I remember the last time I, I did that one was when I had a gig. So I might see you there, Kev. That might be ideal, actually. Uh, 10K to, to get that in uh, in March would be spot on. Um, Louia da, da I da, da five I don't know the I've I don't who knows how disappointing was the Nike Invincible three Z no I really like the Invincible three it's working tremendously well for me I really like the way it looks as well I think it looks way better than the others I haven't had any problems really with heel slip or anything like that it's really comfortable um, S says if all the Vimeo sixteen has a nice narrow fit. I haven't found anything that's quite like the Vimeo 16. That is a great shoe. I uh, really enjoyed that. And it's a bit underrated as well. I'll try and pick up some pairs if they're still knocking around. Uh, Jonathan is drawing late. Uh, cooking King Po Prawns here in Norwich. Amazing. Uh, any recommendations for lightweight running jackets? Um, I really like the Saw stuff. I've been using all their bits and pieces recently. Uh, the Ultra Jacket. Um, some of their sort of uh, wall tech type stuff as well works really well really good stuff um, it's expensive yes but it does wash incredibly well and it still retains those sort of properties as well um, some of the running gear you know after a few uses uh, my wife just complains it stinks some of it you can try washing it with all sorts of different things it makes no difference the saw stuff just seems to repel the odor i don't know how it works it's really cool um so do check some of that out it's worth it you know you can buy like a jacket for like 20 quid right and within a few weeks it just smells horrible you don't want to wear it or you can buy something that costs a lot more but you can just wear it for years so it's one of those so if you're going to be out running all the time and you know you get your money's worth from it basically just repeat use um, Gary Bowes says, uh, Wiggle um, Gel's packaging is identical to Torx. Oh, okay. I'll have to check those out. Uh, Sophie S says, um, Build your perfect shoe, your best upper. I've lost it, Sophie. There it is. Um, your best upper, your best midsole, your best sole. Uh, outsole, I think I'm going to have to go with um, some Puma Grip. What would I go with? I'd probably go with the outsole we got on the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2 at the moment. I really like that. It just is fantastically good. Um, I would go maybe with the midsole of the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 and upper of the A6 Metaspeed Sky Plus. There we go. That's my hot take straight out. So yeah, a bit of a weird shoe that one, but um, that's what i go with. Uh, have you, uh, Rob says, have you tried the New Balance 3 race shoe? Oh, the, is that the SC Elite 3? I I tried the two. Um, I, I don't know, fuel cell just doesn't seem to do an awful lot for me. It just seems to look, be a little bit... I don't know, I wouldn't say dead, but it doesn't seem to have the same sort of response as some of the others. So I'm not sure I'm prepared to shut up 200 and... 10 or whatever it is for that one it's a lot of cash uh, for a shoe that i just don't think it's going to really work all that well and probably isn't going to stay too long in the rotation so i'm probably going to leave that one on the virtual shelves um john brow says uh, hi ed like to ask um what shoe you think is faster for a half marathon race already in the vapor fly half marathon on the road to kumi sen um try and get that eight nine 
seems fine but you know the eight you can get really good prices at the moment so that would be a really good one for the half marathon a little bit less cushion but it's still got a lot of pop to it um I mean, if you think that people are racing, you know, race flats years ago, there was next to nothing in terms of midsole. Now we've got an embarrassment of riches, really. Um, the foams are great. Our Light Strike Pro is really good. It gets better and better the more you kind of use it as well. If you get your, like a, a meat tenderizer out and give it a good a whack, you know, with that, it will it'll sort of free it up a bit. Or you could just run in it for a bit as well, you know. It's probably a bit more exciting, though, with the meat tenderizer, isn't it? can you imagine that someone's watching you taking the shoe out of the box and you know but yeah that'll be my that'll be my choice <clears throat> ethan brown says hi from australia fantastic what time is it over there ethan is it like tomorrow now that's really strange you're in tomorrow and we're in today yeah I'm in a funny mood today. Uh, Peter says hi. Uh, he's run his first marathon on the 14th, Copenhagen. Um, would my endorphin speed three protect my feet? I don't see why not. Um, I mean, I take it you're probably doing some long runs, Peter. So take the speed out, see what it feels like, you know. On your long runs, it's to test things, isn't it? It's to test you, your body, your gear. Um, so that would be my um, advice there. Take it out there and see what happens. You gotta gotta do it. It's a bit like that with like guitars and stuff. I bought a a Gibson SG. Um, oh, it's a beautiful thing. Why I've never owned an SG before, I don't know. But I got it. I tuned it up. I took it out for a gig. It just sounded immense. You know, you gotta try these things sometimes. Just get out there and do it and see what happens. Hugo particularly likes that float ride uh, three and four. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to testing out the five. Um, that is a great, great line. Really like that model, Hugo. It's fantastic. What value as well. You can often pick them up like for 50, 60 quid here in the UK. Or Earth Credits, uh, as, as people tend to say. Um, if you're in the chat, people, please uh, hit that like button. It really does help us out. If you've got a very particular question you want to get straight to me, um, and, you know, I've got loads to get through here, but if you want to sort of bypass some of the... Uh, the huge number of questions please fire me a super chat as well um and it will uh, it will appear it will sort of illuminate there'll be an icon and I, it will attract my attention like a an inquisitive magpie yeah mark breeze is here he's a bit late to the stream but you're with us now mark and that is the important thing um, JJJ says, uh, your videos play a huge role in my shoe buying decisions. Uh, check out the band Greenleaf. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll go and check them out. Greenleaf, I've not heard of them before. What have I been listening to recently? The um, Lemon Twigs. I really like them. Great band. they got a track called uh, Hell on Wheels. Oh, it's just a wonderful song. It's a bit like a sort of... Um, like a musical theatre type track. It's really cool, really different. And uh, what else have I been listening to? Loads of ACDC at the moment. Really loving that. If you want blood, you've got it. You know, what a tune. Um, Mark Bree says, what's Tanglewood guitars like? Yeah, there's some good Tanglewoods out there. Um, they do some pretty good stuff. What's the brand that... Are Kind of like a, a lower budget version of Martin. Is it Sigma or something? I think there's some pretty good Sigma guitars as well. I've heard that good things about them, Mark. Uh, Paul says, here, Mr. B, I'm proper buzzing. Got the, it's proper buzzing. Got the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. Crikey. Let me know what those are like, Paul. Give me an email or something. Fire one over. You can always find my email in the uh, description of the videos. Uh, Jao says, discovered your channel very recently. Thanks for all the content. He's in Brazil. Amazing. Thanks for tuning in. I'm glad you've been enjoying the uh, enjoying the show. Um, IQ by zero. Uh, your opinion, what is the best way to take your phone with you on the run? Um, if you've got one of those flip belts, I think that's probably one of the best ways. I'll tell you what, I cannot stand taking stuff with me when I run. Now, people always say, Ed, can you get more footage? Can you take your GoPro out? All this type of stuff. 
yeah, it's just the, I just can't abide having all this stuff with me. I just like running free, like and and not being tied down with all the stuff. If I have to take my phone, I put it in the flip belt. I just can't stand things bouncing around on me, and I I, I just feel really uncomfortable. Um, so that would be my best bet, I think. Use a, a flip belt, and you can put some gels in there, and maybe a a penguin or a gold bar or something like that if you get particularly hungry. <laughs> Gold bars, they're great. I don't mean a, a bar of gold, I mean like a chocolate. It's like they're cool, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, maybe you haven't got those over there, the gold bars. I spotted them over here in Tesco's or something the other day. Um, Ethan says, Morton Jail's the only one who can trust for races. Yeah, never had an issue, neither have I. They always seem to work better and uh, yeah. There's a few times when I've, uh, when I've used some other stuff and it, it, it's not worked out well. Mark Breeze with the super chat here. Uh, thanks, Mark, for supporting the channel here. Uh, what's the Puma Fast Star like? As I've had a chance to get a pair of steel of a price for a half marathon. But it's more multi-terrain gravel, compact mud. Uh, I've, it just so happens that I've got that shoe right here, sir. So I would suggest if you're running on that, can you see all the little holes and things? They're going to get pretty clogged up. And even worse, there's like a, a bee nest, like honeycomb style. You can see there's loads of bits and stuff trapped in here already. So I would suggest for that sort of purpose, Mark, it may not be the best bet. Um, yeah, if you're on gravel and things like that, compacted mud, I would perhaps avoid that one. I uh, hope that helps out, Mark. Uh, it's not not the best choice for that. If you're running on road, dynamite, absolute dynamite. But on on the uh, on the gravel, got to be a bit bit careful there. Um, let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, Steve H is disappointed with the Invincible Three. Got a heel slip. I think the I think you know Steve that the midsole's the same. I just think it's the application. I don't know where that shoe is. It, it may be out, out there somewhere. Um, there's a lot of shoes in here. There's a lot of shoes. I need to have a clear out ready. Um, I think it's the outsole is just making it a little bit more sort of feel a bit more rigid. Does that make sense? There's a bit more sort of to it really. I think that's what's making it more rigid. But it's working for me. Once I got some more miles into it, it seems to have freed up a little bit. I do have a video coming out. It might be today, probably tomorrow now. Um, which compares uh, the Invincible 3 up against a load of shoes. So um, that will be coming up very soon. So keep an eye out for that, people, if you're still on the fence. Um, Steve H, uh, high five gels are good and tasty. That's what we want as well. We want some, want something a bit tasty out there you know, to keep us going. Kev Stenner says that is the one. It's the 5th of March. All right, Kev, yeah, I th I'm, in, I'm in for that. I'm in for that one. I need to need to do a 10k race pace. Let's do it. I'm up for that. Although I'm gonna to have to select something that means I don't slip around on that initial section. Uh, the race that Kev Stenner's talking about there is the um, Weymouth 10k. It starts up on Bowley's Cove on this sort of grassy area, and then you go down this wicked hill. It is pretty steep. Um, and then you're right the way along the seafront and then back again. Um, really nice straight at the end as well. You can really smash it. So looking forward to that. I'll, I'm up for that one. Um, Tip Top Magoo. He says, hi from Sunderland. Triumph 20 or the Glide Ride 3 for easy runs. Glide Ride's quite a controlling shoe. It's got, it really wants you to go with that rocker. So I'd probably say there the Triumph 20 might be better. I haven't tried either of those shoes though. Only going on um, what I've seen perhaps from Kafuzi. He's uh, one of the main um, people that I, I still watch and always have done. Um, I really do like um, the, the way that Mike goes about reviewing the shoes. It just really sort of ticks all the boxes for me. I understand it. It makes sense to me. Um, Steve, uh, Sean Marshall says, Hi from Texas. What do you recommend for a good 5K shoe? With a 5K, I think, you know, shoe choices a little bit more down to the terrain you're going to be running on. If it's just road, you know, you can smash it with a Vaporfly or something like that. But if if you're going across different surfaces and things like that, you really want to think about what's going to give you good grip and some consistency there. 
But I think with 5K, it, it's more down to, to you, really, um, perhaps, and, and what you're made of. I think the shoe choice is a little bit less vital um, as you go down. But if I was going to run a road 5K, I'd probably go with, like, the Takumi Sen 8, um, maybe... Maybe go with that Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2. I've been really enjoying that one recently. Um, you can definitely wear the Invincible 3 for, for just sort of walking about. Just sort of, you know, walking and, and kind of your daily activities. No reason why not. Perhaps if you're standing up as well for, for ages, perhaps you've got some sort of retail type job, could be ideal. Um, Energy Runner says, any tips for a 15-year-old looking to run a marathon? Crikey. Um, I would I would suggest, you know, making sure you get some of those long runs in. I'd be a little careful, though, as your body's still kind of, you know, developing and you're sort of building up that strength. The marathon is one of those where it is all about, you know, that core strength and endurance. So, um, yeah, just be be a bit cautious on that one, I would suggest. Uh, Dimitri says, instead of gels, try dates. Interesting. I could I could bring a small pack of dates with me. I like that. That's a good suggestion, Dimitri. And different as well. That's one of those sorts of things perhaps I could put into a forthcoming um, unconventional running tips one. I like that. Thank you, Dimitri. Uh, Lee Sumner says, evening, Ed. Thanks for tuning in, Lee. I managed to obtain a pair, I like that, obtain, a pair of the Adios Pro 2 from TK Maxx. Fantastic, glad I helped you out with that one. When I went over there, I was just sort of browsing around and suddenly they were like, there they were. In in that sort of blue, red and white colourway as well. Really, really quite nice, very pleasant. Pleasant to the eye. Oh, Stephen C, I, I did spot the other day in Bristol there was a man wearing green Pan Ams. I've never seen the, the green pair before, but I, I did stop him and I asked him about them. He said he got them from a charity shop. So uh, there we go. Maybe worn by Rodders at one point, you never know. Um, Chris Grayson says, Hi Ed, joining uh, Just Finished Work. I hope you've had a good day at work. I hope it's been stress-free. Uh, returning his Alfly 2s today. One of the Zoom pods, pop, uh, Zoom pods popped. That's how to say that. Pop, 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 pop. Um, whilst pacing a 70-minute 10-mile race. I've not heard of any uh, of the Alfly 2s popping, but, you know, it does happen from time to time. I have seen others go as well over some time. And Tony V, thank you for the super chat. Much appreciated. It says, hey there, I really enjoy your videos. And objective perspective. Thank you. I always try and be. Just a quick donation to thank you from France. Thank you very much. That is much appreciated. European viewers are always appreciated. I always classify myself as European. I am uh, very European. Um, Evan says, how can I get the new vapor flies when they come out? You must be very quick. That's what you've got to be, Evan. You've got to be super quick and get in there um, as soon as they release. I would imagine the initial burst will <coughs> be, be dropped like the uh, the Proto colorway. But it looks as if they've got a whole load of others stashed away waiting to, uh, to be lapped up. I don't think Nike will hang around too long. They'll get those out pretty quick. You know, people want them, don't they? So that, what, what's the point in hyping something up and then not letting... People buy them, you know, what is the point in that? Um, Jody says it's tomorrow morning in Oz. Oh, okay, it's 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 getting towards sort of evening, night time here. 7.36 in Sydney, crikey. Well, I hope you guys have a good morning, a, a fantastic day. Uh, Peter says he loves the guitar analogy, dreamt about a Les Paul for ages and traded a jazz master for one. The trade lasted less than 24 hours. Yeah, I can't get on with Les Pauls. They just don't work for me. Um, they're too heavy. I'm a pretty like light guy, you know. Um, I don't weigh an awful lot. So having a nice light sort of guitar works. The SG's super light. It just seems to fit my body. So it just works. 
Uh, Lee Harrison likes a bit of the ACDC. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, I like uh, Power Age. That's probably my favourite album. You can put that one on and, you know, Riff Raff. What a track that is. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic music. So pure. You know, you haven't got all these sort of bells and whistles attached to it. It's kind of like a really good running shoe, you know. It's just simple. It does the job. Um, ACDC, very good as well to put on the headphones. Want to do some speed work um, to get you, get you really revved up before a race. Fantastic. Um, Bobby says, uh, first ever Edbud live stream. Thanks for doing all you do. Thanks very much, Bobby. I hope you enjoy the videos. Hope you enjoy them as much as I do making them. That's what it's all about. Um, let's try and hit it with a few more of these comments here. Got about 10 minutes left um, of the live stream to go. Um, Dion Jones, he says, Hi, I'd love your videos. Can you say my name? I have done it. Dion Jones. Uh, Colm R, uh, one of our members there, says, Hey, Ed, bought the Invincible 2, took him out for a few runs, didn't get on with them, discovered a, a spike of midsole foam sticking up in the middle of my foot. So I was delighted to be able to return them. That's not good. Well, I'm glad. I'm sad that those didn't work out for you. I've really, really enjoyed the uh, Invincibles over the over the years since they've been out. But I think my favourite one is still the uh, the special modified version where I chopped off all the excess foam. It really makes it quite a light. It's about th chopped off about. About 40 grams off the weight of the shoe. You just don't need all that extra stuff. And it's a quite a nice sort of high tempo shoe now. It does make you realise just how much foam's there. Look, look at that. That's a hefty old wadge of foam underfoot. Really is. They work really well now. Um, Liam says, what is your half full marathon pre-run breakfast? Um, bananas work pretty well for me. I like a good bowl of porridge though. Just keeping it simple, you know. Porridge is pretty good. Uh, it works for me just during the day, you know, standard day at work or something. I have a nice big bowl of porridge. It seems to get me through till lunchtime when I can uh, chow down on some other stuff. So that that will probably work for me. Oh my God, it's Ed Bud. Hello. <laughs> um, Someone else, I, I can't even begin to pronounce that one, Bartholomew. Uh, should I get the Vapor 3s? I, I think you, you probably should. Uh, legs will move. Do you ever play basketball? I have a little go here and there. Um, yeah, I'm reasonably tall. I think I'm slightly taller than that chap, uh, Mac, you know, that won the slam dunk contest uh, over the weekend. That was pretty good, wasn't it? What a What a guy. Quite enjoyed watching that. It's kind of brought back my enjoyment, really, of the dunk contest, watching him. Um, let's see what else we've got going on here. Mike Huston says, bit of a Nike hater. Do you, do you mean me? Not not entirely sure I, I am, really. I, I quite like a lot of Nike shoes. Some of them, you know, aren't great, but... There are some, I don't really care what brand it is, to be honest. If it works, if it's a good shoe, it's a good shoe. That's that's it, regardless of the brand. Mark Bree says, you're my Kafuzi, Edward. Keep up the solid content. <laughs> Steve H says, apparently baby food can work well as, a, as an energy gel. Well, it worked for Robocop, didn't it? So, you know, it should work for, for us as well as being runners. Um... Hamza says, what are your thoughts on the Ultra Boost? Um, it's not out over here yet, so I would like to try and pick it up at some point and give it a whirl and see what happens. Uh, but yes, not, not out yet. Uh, Beast is still asleep. Beast. You coming up? Come on, come, come here. Come on, the people have spoken. They want to, they want to see you. Come on. Oh, come on, you heavy beast. Here's Beast. Ah, beast. There you go. Live on the live stream. How are you doing? You okay? There you go. Beast is here. 
just relaxing. That's the microphone there. Look, you can have a bit of a sniff there. Good old beast. Oh god, <sighs> that animal needs to do some uh, long, long runs. I think a bit too, a bit too heavy, say <laughs> for my back anyway. Um, Yellow Brad says looking for a uh, everyone's loving beast. <laughs> I'm gonna get gonna get loads of comments now. Everyone loves beast. Um, Sol Solar Beam says uh, subscribe last year. Love the channel. Thanks for tuning in. It's much appreciated. Uh, Ethan says what's your opinion on the Invincible Three so far? Really enjoying it. And no heel slip for me there at all. Um, Yellow Brad says looking for a marathon trainer for wide feet. Maybe try that Adios uh, 7, but in the wide fitting. Try that. You you never know. It might it might work very well for you. Um, Dark Kick says use dried mangoes. That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, dried mangoes and dates. Yeah. I've always been put off eating dates, though, from uh, that Indiana Jones film where someone poisons the dates and it kills like the monkey. And uh, he's just about to eat one as well, and he grabs it before Indy can eat it. Yeah, it's always put me off that for, from dates. It's ridiculous, isn't it, really? It's a film, you know. It wasn't real, but it always has done. Um, Chris Down says, uh, Ed, first time marathon at Alpha Fly 2 for 160. Worth it. Yeah, I'd say for 160. That's a little bit easier to swallow, isn't it? Um, it's still a lot of money, but yeah, if you're doing a marathon, it's going to help out certainly towards the end sorts of sections there. Um, Javier, or uh, Javier, I, I know two have, there's a Javier and a Javier. Javier um, says, Edbird, one big hug from Colombia. Fantastic. Glad you enjoyed the videos. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Neil Fox is down with COVID again. Ah, oh, Neil, that is not good. Make sure you get lots of orange juice. That helped me a little bit. And just take it easy. Really do. Just sit and relax and, and you know, get through it um, best you can. There is a super chat there from Steve H. Super chat for Beast. There you go, Beast. A super chat from Steve H for you. Just send some support. Keep up the great content. Thank you, Steve. Steve. That is really, really kind of you. Supporting the channel and uh, Beast as well. Beast is awake now, and uh, oh, it's going back to sleep. It's gone back to sleep. Um, see if we can get through. Um, yeah, so Beast uh, admin by the heater. Um, what other questions have we got? Just a few moments to get through the last ones. Mark Rogers says, uh, hi, Ed, loving the channel. Um, we're on the first marathon this year. Uh, 6'3", just under 16 stone, Think about Nimbus 25. Yeah, I'd look at the Nimbus 25. I'd also suggest checking out the some of the Ultra Boost models as well if you want a little bit more of that firm cushion that's really consistent over time. But Nimbus 25 could be a good bet. I think there is a wide version of that as well, so possibly check that one out, Mark. That could do the trick for you. Yeah, Neil Dixon, yes, yeah, one scary cat. Um, you do need to wear gardening gauntlets if you're ever going to, like, administer some sort of medicine to Beast. Um, yeah. Even the dog is scared of Beast. The dog is very scared. Um, Will Willing says, is there any reason to monitor the heart rate during a half marathon? Um I think if you're getting your pacing right and you've done enough work in that sort of realm, then you'll probably know if you're pushing it too hard. But I think it's easy to do that in a race. So I think it is good to keep a bit of an eye on what you're doing, where you know how hard you're pushing things so that you can keep it within those sort of appropriate levels, uh, keeping things within those kind of barriers. Because um, it's really easy to go over the top in a race when you get... You know, excited and there's all sorts of other people around you and stuff. Chris McLean says, great to see live streams back. Today I've been mostly running in the Deviate Elite. Awesome. And the Hyperion Tempo as well. Yeah, God, that was a good shoe. I remember that one very fondly. Right, we're going to wrap things up, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the live stream, the return of the live stream. I'll be trying to do these on a more regular basis now for you. Thanks for all the super chats um, from the... Uh, within the chat there also all the members that have joined in as well today um, lots of very familiar names popping up here in the comments very much appreciated we'll sign off my name is ed bud and i'll be seeing you